Hello mate and welcome to a slightly croaky uh, episode of uh, Get a Rendering. It's uh, going to be a slightly short one this for obvious reasons but I thought I would go over some light theory. One of the main reasons I'm doing this is because I've noticed that people are still paying for tutorials for one light setup and I can cover this topic in a fraction of the time that these tutorials take and there won't be any waffle or bump in there either so let's jump in the first thing I want to talk about is actually a histogram because a lot of people don't understand them or don't quite get how to read them and this diagram here I found on Google images is a reasonably simple description and what you have here is the number of pixels how many pixels are in and this is how much light there is so midtone is kind of center of let's say let's give this let's draw a rectangle here let's say that this is the visual spectrum of light this area here so i'm going to just create a new layer and i'm going to fill it with black like this and then i'm just going to drop down the opacity there right so let's say that that area there is the visible spectrum of light anything outside of this is going to be either where's my pen or my brush there anything outside of this spectrum or this this region this spectrum so this is very very bright this is very very dark anything in that direction will just be appear to the human eye as completely white and anything outside of that line there will be completely black and you'll see this if you own a dslr when you take pictures what you need to do is have this peak in the center you want the maximum number of pixels to be contained in the center of your histogram or as close to it as possible um ideally that is very rarely is that the case though ideally what you really want is just for all of the pixels on the histogram to be contained within the visible spectrum as as basically to in order to make sure that it's visible so when we set up our lights in dash studio what we want to do is make sure that they're not so bright that all of the detail on our model is disappearing but we also don't want it to be so dark that we lose it into the shadows as well we want it to be all as visible as possible so here i've got lucy what we're going to do is we're going to create a three light setup the purpose of this light setup is to create a halo of light around our character and just that makes them stand out from the background so what we're going to do is we're going to create a light source <clears throat> i'm going to go with a sphere just to make life simple and we'll stick with a one meter perfect like that now we're going to grab our move tool and what we're going to do is because our character is actually offset i'm just going to grab her and i'm going to move her to the center to make sure that she's dead back dead center where we need her to be now because this is a very large light source i could just move this directly behind her and up a bit and it would act as though it were a two light setup because it's massive however what we're going to do is i'm going to shrink it down and scale to be about 10 percent of the size it currently is now i'm going to move it over this way and i'm also going to move it up because we want our light source to be roughly at the same kind of level or if not a little bit higher than our camera would be so i start off with them being at head level what i need to do now is apply an emissive property to the surface by coming down in the surface tabs in emission i'm going to add that change that to white then all my my controls appear and i'm just going to switch it to kcd m squared now next thing in my render settings what i'm going to do is first thing I have to actually change to NVIDIA iRay preview mode, otherwise the controls for the environment are not going to appear. Give that a few seconds to have a bit of a think about what it's doing. Then I can go into environment and I can change this to scene only. And what I can do is come back here and see what we see. Now, as you can see, we've got a very faint highlight around the characters at the left hand side at the moment. Where there are less reflective properties of our surfaces, like for example on her black pants, you can see the light is being reflected much less. But if I were to zoom right in, some of that detail is starting to become a little bit more apparent. If 
like this. So there we go. Now we can see this detail around there. In fact, I'm actually going to turn off the clickability of our character because we don't want to keep seeing that highlight. So now you can see that there's a very subtle highlight around her like that. And I'm actually reasonably happy with that, but I'm going to move the light source a smidge away anyway, just to see if we can see how much of a difference I've moved it maybe a couple of feet in the background. And as you can see, that highlight has now become slightly larger. What I also want to do is I'm going to come back to my parameters. I'm actually going to change the height of it to maybe 250. Now you can see that we're capturing more of the shoulder, but as you can see, the highlight on the face because of the hair is now completely gone. So what we want to try and do is find a happy medium. So I'm going to say 210 and see if we get some of the face highlight back. Yeah, we're getting a little bit there. And now we can adjust the emissive property of this. So currently we're on 1500. I'm going to go up to 3000. That's still good. We can see there's no blown out highlights. What we're looking for is this highlight becoming completely white, which is undesirable. But I would say we are a fair way off that being a problem. As we can see, look, there's still detail in there at the moment. And we're at 10,000. I reckon we can probably go 50,000 before we start seeing any blowout. In fact, I would say that's pretty much perfect in terms of what we're trying to achieve here. There is a great deal of highlight there, but it's not so bright that we're losing any of our detail. We can still make out the colors on all of those. If all you can see is white, then you've gone too bright. So now what we want to do is come back into our texture shaded mode and zoom out. I'm actually going to create a camera and I'm going to apply default settings. I'm just going to drop that to zero. I'm going to leave the Y translator about 165. Z translate, I'm going to put to about 1000, not 10,000. That's too much. Change the X rotate and the Y rotate the Z rotate. Now, if we jump back into our camera, select our camera, change the focal length. It's going to go up to about there. And then we can drop the camera down until we can see the bits of the character that we want to see. So that, that's pretty much what I'm after. Come back to perspective view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this sphere and I'm going to just go to edit, duplicate nodes, and it's going to duplicate everything. Now the X translates the only thing I need to change here. So I'm going to change it from 105 to minus 105. No, that's 1105. That's my bad minus 105 now we've got an exact replica of that light on the other side so we should be seeing almost identical highlights on that side of the body so let's jump into our camera view switch to nvidia ira preview mode and let's have a look and as you can see now what we've got is a nice highlight around the majority of the upper body there's a little bit lacking from the underside of the arms but that's fine because the chances of a character ever standing in the A pose is fairly slim. And we can see the detail around there. You can even see the backpack that she's wearing catching the light behind her. So those are our two rear lights. Now you can adjust these as much or as little as you want. You can move them inwards to make this highlight thinner. You can move them outwards to make them wider. You can increase the size of the light source to soften the shadow up. You can decrease the size of a light source to make these shadows harder. <clears throat> and if you want to, you could even apply some kind of bloom effect in post-processing to make this kind of give her a real glowing aura. But those are our two, what we would call rim lights. Now we're going to come back to texture shaded again. And we're going to come out of camera view there. And we're now going to create what we call our key lights. Or in this case, it could be the fill light, but this is a key light. So we're going to create another sphere. This time it's going to be, we're probably going to leave it at one meter this time. Drag this out away from the body to the front. And this is where you can have a little bit of fun. Generally speaking, you would want the light source to be above the character's head. So that you can't actually see it in the shot. I'm just going to drop this down here like this. And now we're going to apply 
the lighting properties to this sphere as well. So change the emissive color to white. And then we can change this to KCDM. Now I am not going to do any more adjustments right now. First thing I need to do is jump into NVIDIA IRA preview mode because this is going to be really bright. Remember, this is 10 times bigger than these guys. So the light property, the light output from this light source is going to be pretty bright. So as you can see, didn't need to do any adjustments at all there. And we've got some nice, some nice uh, shadowing, but because it's all directly ahead of her, it kind of looks a bit meh and it makes her chin look a bit weird. So what I'm actually going to do is now I'm going to start having play with the X translate. Let's try putting this at 100 across in the X axis. Now that's already made a big difference and made things look better. <clears throat> now, if I jump into my camera, we can see we've still got that highlight, which is great. And now we've got this fill light so we can see the details of the, on the front as well now to me the light source is too big because it's making a lot of the details and the contours of her face look very washed out so this does present us with a bit of a conundrum personally what i would normally do is go to about 50 percent of the size now note how much darker that light source has become already now i'm going to change the emissive properties to about 5000 just to compensate. In fact, we could probably go up to about 10,000. Yeah, that'll do, that's fine. The issue that we have is that the light source is really is washing out the details in her face. And um, this is where we have to just experiment with the position until we get the effect that we're looking for. There is no tried and tested, get it right every time solution to this problem. You're just going to have to play with the height and the X axis to try and get the result you want um what i might be inclined to do is go minus 120 there to see how it looks with the light on the side of her face to the hair and that creates this shadow down this side of the face and that adds a little bit more depth to the image because where we had the light coming in from the side where her hair wasn't previously we could see all of her skin there and that there was no depth but now we've created a little bit of a contour now what I'm thinking of is, let's just see how it looks when the light source is at it's much lower. That's probably a bit too low. I think I meant to type in 150 there. Didn't want horror, horror show lighting, but we've got a nice bit of cross lighting there. And again, that does create some interesting effects. And let's just see if maybe if we go up to 190 which is the height of her head that's going to create a nice effect there and i'm almost inclined to move it back across to maybe minus 80 just to soften up that shadow around the face a little bit more now i think the light source is a little bit bright so we're going to tweak it a little bit more come back down maybe to sort of 7500 I just remove some of that glossiness that was appearing on her skin and it was also kind of clashing with the highlights that we had on this shoulder now something else that we can do if we wanted to be really interesting so let's go with this one first we're going to change our emission color and we're going to go kind of blue it's not very noticeable because it's on this side <coughs> So if I change this one as well, let's go for this one. I want to create a slightly, slightly yellowy kind of effect. Yellow and blue are opposites on the color chain, on the color diag, on the color chart. So that will make it a bit warmer. Yeah. So they're opposites on the color chart, so that they complement each other quite well. I've done something like red and green that tends to um, clash a little bit or red and blue clashes for sure you know that's the kind of colors of police lights and things like that so but anyway as you can see now what we've got is quite a nice effective three light setup Add a little bit of color into the background just to make things look a bit different and then we've got our fill light or a key light in the front just to create the uh, main light on the subjects now 
there is light in the shadows, albeit not a great deal. If you wanted to change that, you could add a lighter, another light source in there. Or alternatively, what you can do is come back to texture shaded, come into perspective view. And what we can actually do is just create a reflector, which is a surface that reflects light. That's all it is. So I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to hit accept there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver this. So it's just below waist height. I'm going to rotate it along that axis a little bit. And I'm also going to rotate it this way a smidge. And I'm going to move it kind of there. You will be able to see this in the shot. So obviously IRL, you wouldn't have it this big and in this location. But now if we jump into NVIDIA IRA preview mode again, what you will see is that the shadows underneath the chin and the side of the face have been lifted just a little bit. And there you go. So now the light from the light source is bouncing off of this surface and then just taking the shadows out a little bit, adding a little bit more detail into those areas. So you can still see that they're shadows, but you've basically you've made the histogram a bit narrower because you've lifted the shadows out and made them more detailed. So that about wraps it up for this episode, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know you will. I will see you in the next one, preferably when I can speak again. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves. All right. Bye-bye.